Hi guys. So I've been wondering, right? I have servers. Lots and lots of servers. Physical, virtual, VMware, Proxmox, and loads of things in between, right? So I got myself wondering, how am I gonna manage them all? But before we get into that, have a look at this video. Maybe some cool things that you wanna see here. Hello there, so I just talked about a system that we can be using to manage loads and loads of different servers, right? And one of the solutions that I came up with that was the Fog Project. So the Fog Project is a system which allows us to clone and manage different systems and it's open source. So that's really, really cool for us. How do we get it installed? How do we use it? All of that good stuff, right? So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something called Oracle VirtualBox. Now, why am I using Oracle VirtualBox? Well, previously, in my previous tutorials, I made a video using it. So I thought, why not be truthful to the roots and do that again? It's probably the easiest and quickest and most simplest way to get started. So I'm gonna use that again. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to download the Ubuntu 2204 server image, which is down here. With that, then we're gonna install the Fog project using these commands. And then we also are going to hook it up into PFSense. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. First things first, how do we install Ubuntu to get our system correct, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the system here, right? So I've got these settings here and what I've done is simply gone to, to new, added in all of those things. And from here, literally system 8192, processor is gonna be 16. And then the network, this is the important part, needs to be bridged and it's gonna be the first adapter. Why the first adapter? Well, the first adapter is the one that's usually in use, and that's the reason why. Then we go to advanced, then we are going to allow all for promiscuity. Reason being is because it allows for connection from VM to the PFSense router. Now for the storage system, what we're gonna do is we're going to add our 220401 image. I'm gonna click okay on that. And then I'm going to install it, but I'm going to pause the video here because you don't really need to see the installation. All I'm gonna be doing is selecting my region name. So in other words, the UK, I'm gonna be selecting UK for keyboard and then typing in my username and password. But the bit that's important is the bit around the P addressing, which is the bit that I'm going to resume the video on. So just bear with me as I do that. Okay, so just in case you're wondering, it's gonna be English UK, update the new installer. Okay, next one we're gonna go for is done on this because I'm in UK, done on the Ubuntu server. Now this is the important part. So in this part, what you wanna do is you wanna go straight up to the interface, edit DHCP manual subnet 192.168.5.0 for me because that's the VLAN which I'm on. Now 192.168.5. I'm gonna call this 22 and I'm gonna call the gateway 192.168.5.1 because that's where my router is. Same for my name server and same for the search domain. Gonna click save on that, apply the changes. Just wait a second because that should go through and it's done, done on that. And then test the mirror, the mirror should be fine as well. So I'm not gonna make you sit through that. Continue on that. And now we're on the bit about the, the drive. And then at the mount, what we're gonna do is edit this and we're gonna make the root partition be 97. So we want it to cover the entire drive. Then I'm gonna done that and click continue. The name is chosen name. Server name is gonna be Fog Linux. And my username is DC. My chosen password is the password. Click done. We're gonna continue on that. Now here's important. Install OpenSSH server, exactly what we're gonna do, done on everything else, and now we're gonna wait for the installation to complete. Okay, so back again, and what you can see here is that we restarted into the Linux virtual machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to PuTTY, and I'm going to log in via PuTTY into the machine. And the reason being is because we have a script that we wanna run, which I'll show in just a second. Here we go. So the script that we wanna run is this one. And this one, what it does is it downloads the frog project and installs it. So what I need to do is sudo up in the root user, as the root user. What we need to do then is install and update the system. So we're gonna install zip. Okay, it should be pretty quick, pretty quick process. Okay, and there we go. And the next step is gonna to be to download the fog project like this. The reason why that didn't work was because I've got path to fog master, but what I've done is I've downloaded the fog project into the same directory. So all I've got to do is specify the directory and then install the fog project that way. So here's the prompts. Very easy, so I've got Debian on this, so this, if you're following the tutorial, this is Ubuntu, so it's number two. 
This is a normal server. We don't need to change the addressing. We don't need to have any routing or DHCP because that's all handled via PFSense, internalization support of language packs. No, unless you, the language which is not English. HTTPS, don't need that. Uh, would you like to change it to the host name? No, we don't need that. Are you okay sending us information? Yeah, why not? Do we need anything else? No, because what we can do is copy this through the left click. And then I'm gonna just make a note of all this information so that I know what it is. And we're going to say yes to that. And now it's going to install FOC. Okay, so while the system is installing, I thought it might be a good opportunity to go through the PFSense section. So in PFSense, log into your system and then go to services, DHCP server, and then your chosen interface or VLAN. So your VLAN interface or your chosen interface is what I mean to say. From there, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in ISC DHCP. The reason being is because usually if you go to Kia, it doesn't have the supported options that we want. I'm on ISC DHCP for that reason. No other settings are needed. Just go down, save. And then from here, what you want to do is enable boot P on your chosen interface for queries. And then what you want to do is say on the next server, I'm going to have that as 22. And then down here, there should be TFTB server, which should also be on 22. Other settings to note are pretty simple. We've got the default BIOS name, which is this one here, UDNI only. Then we have I386 EFI, SMP only EFI for 32. And same for 64, which is SMP only EFI. ARM64 is a ARM64 EFI SMP only. And if you want any custom DHCP settings, say for example, you need to connect into Windows Server 2012 or you have a Linux server, this is where you would go and do that. That's the main reason why we stick with ISC DHCP is because we need the custom DHCP options if we're doing things like Windows Server. Okay, so it looks like we have managed to update this. So that way the fog installation is done. Now what we need to do is copy the address that it gives us and go to our Google Chrome or Edge. And what we need to do then is install. But before we do that, I just want to make clear that there's a command that you can use in order to back up the database. So this allows you to back up the entirety of the fog project database so you don't have to like continually do this process. But because this is the first installation, we're just going to install, let it do its thing, and then we will be able to log in. The username is fog and the password is password, just like that. And then we're just going to just finalize the last bits of the database. So what we're gonna do is just press enter. One thing we need to do is go to images and we need to create a new image. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in Windows because I want the Windows images to be uploaded to this point. Image description are that these are Windows images and we'll just leave the rest as is. We'll click on add, added all the images. Let's just list them and see that we have one there. Next thing to do is go to hosts and then we're gonna list all hosts as we don't have any. But this is gonna change in just a second because as the server is being configured, what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this particular VM which I created earlier, which is also on a bridge adapter and we're going to essentially capture it. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna shut it down and I'm gonna show you the settings which are on here. We need to go into the PXC settings. Okay, so as you can see, these are the settings which I've used for the Windows system to be captured. The most notable one is that I'm using the same adapter which is bridged, which is on the same network as the FOG server. Now, I wanna be clear that you should enable firewall rules to essentially get the FOG server running. So for example, if you've got your FOG server on one particular subnet, you may want to have it so that way it's recognizable on different subnets, right? So same with the TFTP server settings that we put in, you may wanna have that particular IP address of the FOG server on a different subnet or a different interface. But it's essentially the same thing, but you just need to add the firewall rules in, which is TFTP, DHCP, port 22, and you might need ATM443 if you're doing IPXC. We're not gonna go through that in this video today, it's a point to be aware of. What we're going to do now is we're going to start this Windows 10 VM. And as it's doing that, I just want to show you this uh, F12 thing that we're going to do now because I already have F12. So I'm going to switch this up. It's going to come in through there and I'm going to press F12 to boot alpha LAN. And what you'll see is if I've done this correctly, we should be able to get into our fog server. But I haven't saved it because it's on 17. So this is what we're going to do, right? Because it's on 517. So it's looking for something which doesn't exist. So let's go back to our fog server. Let's go to our settings DHCP server and let's check our settings on Unraid VLAN 5, which is my one here. Now, as you can see, I'm still on 17. So what I need to do is just update this to 22. Click save and we'll apply the changes. So now what I need to do is restart the system. We're going to go to this capture. I'm going to power it off. Then we're going to go back, restart the system. F12. It should be using IP address 22 now. Okay, so let's have a look. Has my configuration gone through? Yeah, I can see it. It's all good. And it should allow us to TFTP in. And we've got to be very careful because there's two seconds between us going from the keyboard and booting into Windows. So we're going to perform a full registration. So what you'll get now is you'll get like this menu. And then you have the host name of this computer. So we're going to call this Windows. Uh, we're going to see what it's associated with, which is a question mark. And we've got image ID of one. So what we're going to do is just say one for this. Do you want to associate with a group? Yes. Do we have any groups? 
none there, so that's fine. Snap-ins, yes. Do we have any snap-ins? No, but that's fine. We don't have a product key. We don't want it to join a domain because we don't have an AD server. Primary use of this is going to be DC. No tags. Would you like to deploy? We don't have any images, so there's no point. So it's going to register the host, and it's doing all that information for us now. So we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so the next part of the process that we want to do is capture the image that host that we registered to Fog is with. So capture it, we press that one, schedule instantly, we're just going to leave it as default, task it, job done. And now all we have to do is power on the host. Okay, so I've just f 12 into it, press L, and then from here it should allow us to go back to Fog for the capturing process, we're booting in. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's running a script, it's going through, it's checking all of the disks which are there, so the sizes, the partition tables, all that kind of thing. Once it's done all that, there's gonna be another part where it goes into the kind of timings which is gonna be required in order to upload the image. Okay, so this was the part that I was talking about, so where we're uploading the image. So just to walk you through this, finds our file system, we have the device size, which is 21.9 gigabytes, is the block size. So what we're doing now is we're just saying, right, okay, this is as big as it's gonna be, and we're going to put that in. So 21.9 is a little bit kind of low for this. It should be around 50 gigabytes. Uh, and the fact that it's got free space there says that this might actually fail to do the deployment when we go to deploy it, which is okay for the demonstration because when we do it in real life, this will actually be fine. So hopefully that's not the case, but right. In terms of deploying the image, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Oracle VM VirtualBox, create a new system. So we're going to say Windows down here. Now the cool thing is that we don't need an ISO image. We just need to say that it exists essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the base memory. We'll give it, uh, okay, we'll give it something arbitrary. Hard disk, we'll call it 100, click next. Next, we're going to go system, network, network, bridged, same one first, and we're going to do promiscuous allow, okay, cool. What we need to do now is we need to create the deployment. So in order to do that, we need to turn it on, and then from there, once it's turned on, we then need to do the F12 stuff, so, okay, so this is where it gets interesting, because we need to perform a full inventory registration. Okay, so coming back, let's see, so we need the host name, so we're going to call this Windows uh, Deploy. Oh, it's truncates, I forget. So we need to call it Windows Deploy, like that, because it does a truncation thing. And I'm going to say one, I'm going to associate with group, yes. We already know that part, yes. We already know that part. Uh, product key we don't have, domain key we don't have, primary user is going to be DC, don't need any tags, would you like to deploy? Yes, we do want to deploy. So fog is our username, password is password. Yeah, there we go, it's doing the registration. And then after that, it will go into the deployment phase. Okay, so I wanted to point out something significant in the deployment phase. When you get to this section, and you type yes on the keyboard to go to do the deployment, sometimes what happens is you get something called no configuration method succeeded. You get this type of message down here. And this message can be quite annoying because what it will do is it will try and cycle through and through and through and try to restart until it finds that particular DHCP address. The easiest way that I've found to get around this is simply to shut down the machine and restart. I'm just gonna shut it down like this, power off, power it back on again. And then we're gonna just do the F12 system all again. And just like that, it should now go through where we see that it's getting all the addresses, getting everything, looks like it's booting up, which is great. So we should be able to get in and uh, do the deployment that way. And it doesn't matter that we shut it down and turn it back on again, because Fog already knows that there's a task for this particular machine. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, where we have the deployment process going through. It's going in at 1.8 gigabit gigabytes a minute. And as you can see, the device blocks that we saw earlier, the device size is essentially 5349963, which is being essentially downloaded onto the hard drive from our Fog server. Okay, so it's just finished. And as you can see, gone in very well. It's in fact, it's pretty much the same. So there you go. Complete cloning in about 20 minutes. So thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please like it. Any comments or suggestions are always welcome. And also don't forget to click on that subscribe bell. It won't cost you anything. So I appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a bit lengthy, but hope you've gained some good knowledge out of it. Hope to see you again soon.